Hello YouTube friends! Today I get to react to Food Theory's Stop Drinking Milk video, which I'm super excited about because if you've been with us, I already reacted to his Should I Delete This Video video, which is about this one. So I'm super excited for this. Let's jump in. Here at Food Theory HQ, we're always moving to where the truth is hidden. We are utterly unstoppable when it comes to exposing the truth of the food industry. We're no cowards. And we do more. Okay, this is even worse than my brother. Than Sorry, just skim but... the surface. Ah! Since when is everyone so lactose intolerant around here? Oh wait, since forever, cause we all are. Hello internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that does a body good. Unlike milk, or so I plan to convince you of today. That's right, welcome to part 4, 7, 25, who knows, there's been so many at this point, of our ongoing series entitled The Food That You Think Is Good For You Actually Isn't and You Only Believe That It Is Due To A Combination Of Pro Propaganda and fear mongering. It's a, it's still a working. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is a very lovely title. But also, just a disclaimer: most people in the world are lactose intolerant because you lose the enzymes to break down lactase as you age. So children generally produce enough, and they consume milk very easily in comparison to adults. And it's not quite fair to say that the whole world is lactose intolerant, but the majority is. So just making that clarification, most of the world is lactose intolerant. It's not everybody though, so. Title. But today's episode is tackling what is probably for most of us watching in North America and Europe the most basic of healthy eating advice that we receive as kids. Drink your milk, it does a body good. Drink your milk, it builds better bones. There are members of my family who are literally forced to drink an 8 ounce glass of milk for every single meal. And why not, right? It makes your bones strong, it helps you grow tall, and of course, it's gonna help get you the ladies. I'd like to meet you. But it can actually interfere with the absorption of other nutrients, so... But I'll bet you're hoping for a hunk. I'm drinking milk, though. Milk's about the best thing I can drink right now to help me build strong arms, powerful legs, and a broad oh, chest. And when all my work is done, Will you love me just for my body? Oh boy. Ooh, this is not aged well. Here, pretty swimsuit lady, let me heckle you from various generations of my life. Is this honestly what they taught kids back in the 80s? Will you love me? What is that commercial? For my milk bod? Because all I've got right now is sensitivity, intelligence, and charm. Please, someone. Drew Gooden, Denny Gonzalez, please, someone. <laughs> look into oh these gosh. commercials. Oh, they are a big oof. Now, admittedly, this isn't the first weird commercial that we've had on the show. Though I gotta say the adolescent fantasies and objectification have been cranked up to 11 here, so it's got that going for it. But what's most unexpected about this thing is that it's coming from an organization that sounds reputable. America's Dairy Farmers, the National Dairy Board. But note here that there are no actual- Except it doesn't sound reputable because they're the ones trying to sell milk. And you have to look at people's motives behind trying to sell you a certain food. If they're trying to sell you that food, then you really need to take their nutrition claims with a huge grain of salt. Not literally. ...statistics that are mentioned. No references to medical terms beyond the vague words of vitamins, calcium, and bones. Same with all these other... If you can make it sound legit, people will believe you and buy your product. ...star-studded celebrity commercials. Or you got this one which uses scare tactics to convince us that without milk we're gonna be losing our arms. <laughs> Sure, a lot of these are meant to be funny. Right, so cite your sources. If something is telling you to eat something or to not eat something, look at the sources. Because if they're making claims that sound legitimate, but they don't actually have any legitimate research to back it up, you know what they're trying to do. They're just trying to sell a product and push it at you. Not cool. All of it is actually propaganda. In the case of our sensitive, intelligent, and charming hunk to be, that was actually a commercial created by a consortium of primarily California based milk producers, as well as the marketing firm McCann Erickson San Francisco. Super progressive of you, California. This wasn't just one company, it was like all the milk producers in California getting together to do a broader advertising campaign. Something that, wouldn't you know, various groups across the US food world have been doing for decades. Yes, and in my food science program, 
there was a lot of funding coming from a particular dairy backed company that I will not name but very heavily influenced by the dairy industry I'll say that much and it is regional but oh my word like they push so much for the students to participate in these programs because all of the funding will be backed by this company for you to research anything dairy as you're a food science student and it was very very looked up to and prestigious and they would give you lunches every week and they'd do presentations and all sorts of things that students could participate in to promote more food science students getting into the dairy industry and being all hyped up about it and creating more products that are dairy or at least heavily dairy in order to promote that and sell to more people because not enough people are already consuming dairy apparently. These sorts of campaigns are so misleading because we think of advertisements coming from single companies wanting to sell you their particular version of a product. But in the case of major food producers, they're all working together to just sell you the idea of an individual food product. Would each milk company prefer that you drink their brand of milk? Absolutely. But what they all have in common is that they at least want you to drink some milk. So they all band together to produce stuff like this. Milk's got calcium, don't you? Yeah, so milk in particular, especially like the fresh gallon milk that you'll buy at the grocery store, tends to be sold regionally. So if you're running a huge campaign like throughout your state, you would want to band together with other dairy industry spokespeople because it doesn't really matter. You're still going to be selling to the people in your local region. So when you go to the grocery store, that's why you don't tend to see as much variation in brand as other products. But yeah, at the end of the day, if you're all trying to sell the same thing, might as well put your resources together and make a huge campaign out of it, right? When human babies pop out, they're not fully cooked yet. And a mother's milk, with its complex mixture of nutrients, vitamins, proteins, beneficial bacteria, antibodies, and lymphocytes, act as a literal power shake for babies. But is it still the best thing when we get older? What is this? It's mother's milk evolution would disagree with you there Mad Max. See, one of the main components of milk from all mammals is a disaccharide sugar called lactose. The chemical composition of which is actually very difficult to break down in the adult mammalian digestive system. It needs a hit from an extra- And as I mentioned before, that's because we have a reduction in the enzyme lactase as we get older, which is specifically designed to break down lactose, which then helps your body to convert it in- to a form that more resembles glucose, so your body is more able to treat it like a normal sugar or like other sugars. You know, I don't feel like the use of a superfood is really justified for most cases, but if you're going to use the word superfood, milk would be a superfood for babies or for because really for humans, our gestation is really weird because we have to compensate for women's hips and large skulls coming out of them. So we would more likely carry our babies for a full two years before having them instead of just nine months, which then means that we have to also compensate with the nutrients that we're providing for them in that time frame. And interestingly enough, the national recommendations for how long you should breastfeed your children up from one year to two. So in those early stages, milk is super vital for children to get the nutrients that they need. When it comes from their moms, they're able to get a lot more bang for their buck because they're also able to source antibodies and other things that help build their immunity and strengthen systems beyond just getting nutrients. But that being said, cow's milk is a great opportunity for lots of children who can't, for whatever reasons, get their own mother's breast milk to get milk that will still source a lot of the same nutrients. Enzyme called lactase to get the job done thoroughly. And special pro tip here, if you see A's at the end of a protein name, it means that it's, it's the enzyme. protein's job to slice up another protein so it can be used in your body. Lactase slices up lactose. And here we all thought that science was hard. Anyway, without lactase in our system, lactose becomes uncomfortable to process. And that's when we get ourselves the old tummy trouble. The potty party, if you know what I mean. And the thing is, by the time people hit 20, 
honey, our bodies are designed to no longer produce enough lactase to break down milk, meaning that evolutionarily, all adults are supposed to be lactose intolerant. So what's the- And you don't completely stop creating this enzyme. Your enzyme levels simply reduce dramatically. So you wouldn't completely be unable to digest dairy. You can digest dairy just fine, but in much smaller amounts than you may have consumed prior to hitting the age where your enzymes have decreased. Turns out that shortly after humans began domesticating animals for farming and agriculture, they found that in times of famine, starvation, and when the HelloFresh box got swiped off the porch, that they could turn to old Bessie in the front yard to literally help them survive. Sure, the milk that was being excreted from her udders might not have originally been top of the menu, but it was certainly better to have a stomach ache than a stomach dead. You know, like actually starving to death. And it turns out that a very small percentage of the population in areas where this was happening most frequently, namely Central in Northern Europe had a little mutation that helped him out with this very circumstance. This mutation is called lactase persistence, where instead of losing lactase when you grow up, you retain it, along with the ability to break down lactose. As such, the lact- And even for those from those areas who have this mutation, they generally do still decrease in their enzyme lactase as they age without losing most of it. Over the last five or six thousand years, a mere blink of an eye in terms of evolution, a decent portion of the world's population have now become mutants. Lactase mutants, not like telekinesis mutants or anything cool like that. As time went on, people developed lots of derivatives of milk, like cheese, yogurt, and butter. So if you didn't do so hot with milk, maybe you could handle some of those, and thus the dairy obsession. Yes, and the theory behind some of these other products is that the bacterial cultures that you use to ferment, say, cheese or yogurt, actually break down some of the lactose for you, so that by the time you're eating it, there's less of that sugar that is problematic for your tummy. In fact, cheese is particularly broken down, and it is far more fat and protein content than carbohydrate was born out of a desire to not starve to death. This is all totally logical, but it begs the question, does this 5,000 year old food trend really need to still exist? I mean, jello molds were out by the 1930s, and honestly, they were a lot more fun. Sure, staple food products like milk were important in times and places where food is a limited resource, but is milk that nutritionally great for us that we need to keep drinking it when our bodies may- In my opinion, no, but I'll explain later. Well, it turns out that milk does have a few clear-cut benefits. For one, milk has been clinically shown to make children grow taller. Not kidding. It's estimated that if you add an additional serving of milk to a child's diet every single day, they may add a full centimeter to their final adult height. But it's when we start getting a little older that things get dubious. For instance, research from JAMA Pediatrics tracked teenagers who had consumed large amounts of milk in their childhood. And they showed that their risk of getting a bone fracture was not only the same as non-milk drinkers, but actually higher, especially when you were talking about taller boys. This is one of several studies that show that if you're taller, your bones are larger, which means that you have more body mass to support. And this leads to an increased risk of fractures and breaks, including those really dangerous hip fractures in elderly people. So the milk did make you taller, but also led to more brittle bones later in life that actually break easier. Interestingly enough, what science I was able to find shows that yogurt doesn't have a pronounced effect on height. In fact, it may slightly decrease risk of fracture, but the jury is still out on that one. Maybe we can call it breaking even? On top of that, we know where milk comes from, lactating cows, who have naturally occurring hormones in their bodies just like a person who's recently had a baby. Not their fault, it's just the way it is. But in many countries, additional hormones or steroids are added to cows to make them produce more milk. On top of the lactose that adults aren't supposed to be consuming, a high milk intake can actually alter some of the hormone balances in our own bodies. Once you know, the results on this one are pretty mixed. Consumption of milk as a child and adolescent may increase your risk of prostate cancer later in life, but drinking milk and eating cheese may may decrease your risk of colon cancer. Milk appears to be a pretty mixed bag. Whole milk might increase your cholesterol. Skim milk might lower your blood pressure. This list actually goes on and on and on, and it's difficult to suss out where the science ends and where the bias begins. I mean, you have everything from one side of the spectrum where PETA has their seven reasons you should never eat dairy to the complete other side of the spectrum with the dairy farmers of Wisconsin who make tens of billions of dollars a year on dairy, tirelessly promoting its benefits to the world. The truth is, obviously, 
somewhere in the middle of those two extremes. The big question here, is milk worse than other sources of calcium and nutrients that you could get out there? No, not really. Is it better? Nope, not that either. If the primary reason you're drinking milk is to get calcium and vitamin D so you can grow bigger and stronger and impress all the swimsuit models with your body rather than your sensitivity, consider ways to get the same or her better nutrition with less controversy and less money. Green vegetables like broccoli and kale, more calcium than milk. If you hate green things, just try eating some beans. You know, those fun little round guys that come in burritos and chili? More calcium than milk. Yep, I was surprised too. Tofu, also a primary source of protein and calcium in places in the world where lactose intolerance is high, and it's both cheaper and healthier than milk. You know what else has the nutrients of milk in a pinch? A good calcium supplement, and a vitamin D drop from the grocery store or pharmacy. Luckily, we live in a day and age where those options are available to us. It is not that hard, friends. So to wrap up this trilogy, tetralogy, whatever it is, our series of episodes about the conspiracies lurking around every corner of the grocery store, the food is different. But Which I will say about the supplements, like, if you do need to rely on supplements, that's totally fine. But our bodies do absorb nutrients from whole food sources generally better than supplements. The conclusion largely remains the same each time. Read a nutrition label instead of an advertisement. Don't force yourself to eat or drink something because you saw a commercial for it on TV. And for Pete's sake, if a chicken commercial is produced by the Poultry Association or a lettuce commercial shows up from the Cruciferous Educational Council, consider that they might not be the most unbiased source of information. Every food ad you see is designed to make you believe that you're going to be taller, smarter, stronger, and more beautiful if you eat that food. But lo and behold, doing a little research into a more trusted source of information will actually make you smarter, which in turn will make you more beautiful, or so I hear. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. I loved this video because honestly, I think this is something that we don't address enough. The advertising and all the messages that we get around food really I would say still are more often than not very biased and trying to promote a certain way of eating. That's just how it is and when you're seeing those things you need to keep that in mind. I do also want to mention milk can interfere with the absorption of iron and as a woman who has struggled with iron count in the past, that is something that is important for me to keep in mind while I'm making food choices. So if you have been anemic or have had a history of anemia, so if you have a tendency to be anemic as well, that may be something that you'd like to keep in mind when you're choosing between dairy and non-dairy options. I love that he painted the picture as being super nuanced in their nutrition because in reality it is. Yes, you can get great things from milk. No, it's not a superfood. No, it's not going to give you half the benefits that the dairy industry would like you to believe that it would, but it's somewhere on the middle of the scale where it is a valid food option. I wouldn't make most of your food options be dairy by any means, but it can definitely have its place in a balanced diet. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or any videos you'd like me to do in the future. And I'll see you next time.